The Bake Off tent is prime for action, and I've locked up Mel and Sue so I can eat all the cake. In that tent, there are some familiar faces who've agreed to bake their little hearts out in the name of charity. Welcome to the great comic relief Bake Off. Ah! This time, oh. four more celebrities. Quick, right. Try to sieve, whisk, and roll their way to glory. It's like a war in here. I already feel I know some of the things I didn't do right. <laughs> Taking on three tricky challenges. Sieving something into a bowl, you'll, you'll wish you were dead. I genuinely think I'm going to cry. From two tough judges. It does look, um... Disgusting? Yeah. <coughs> How dry are they? But only one person can be crowned star baker. This is just not the moment to have something go horribly wrong. I'm, I'm going to have to go up to the wire. They're all doing this to raise cash for Comic Relief. Get out there and bake or buy bakes. Either way, get that money going to Comic Relief. And comedian Ed Byrne will be in Uganda to see how the money raised really does change lives. <laughs> This week's Comic Relief Bakers are award-winning comedian and writer David Mitchell. I'm very nervous. The thought that it's for Mary and Paul doesn't help because I suspect that they're, frankly, fussy eaters. Sarah Brown, campaigner for global education, and she also enjoys baking with her sons. I'm enthusiastic about a little bit of, of flour and sugar being mixed together. I'm hoping to wow the judges by giving it my best shot with the baking. Hollywood actor Michael Sheen. Regardless of any talent, I totally irrationally still have a burning desire to obliterate all competition. I am possibly the most competitive person in the world. And a slightly less competitive Radio 1 DJ, Jamila Jamil. I've never made a cake. I've never even been in the room when a cake has been made. I'm basically going in here genuinely blind. Welcome, comic relief scared people, <laughs> <laughs> to your signature challenge. Mary and Paul would like you to make shortbread, and it must have that extra je ne sais quoi. Think toffee, think marshmallow, think pig's trotters. You have to make 24 identical portions in an hour and a half. So, on your marks, get set, bake for comic relief. Do you ever get that feeling you haven't really listened? <laughs> <laughs> you sort of feel when you're going to be judged by Mary Berry that you need to get your quantities right, so I'm being a bit more precise than I might normally be. We'll be looking for perfect shortbread. The most difficult thing of all is the baking. If they don't cook it long enough, it won't be crisp. If they cook it too long, it will have taken too much colour. Quite a challenge. Whether the comedians, whether actors, whatever, they come into the tent, they come into our realm, and we've got to judge them exactly the same as we judge any other bake-off. Light and fluffy, light and fluffy, everyone. They call me that in LA, you know? Michael Light and Fluffy Sheen. Shortbread should be a safe bet for a charity bake sale. It only has three basic ingredients, sugar, butter and flour. So, if you know what you're doing, it's simple. I'm stressed and it's messier and more quiet than I expected it to be. Now I can sift. Yes. Hmm. Why do you have to sift it? Why can't you just put it in normally? Have I chosen the wrong sieve? So I have a David Mitchell running commentary going on behind me. It's like having Radio 4 on in the kitchen. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> David, it's a dangerous zone here. I can yeah, see no, lots I've, of flour everywhere. I've, yeah, I've, I've encountered more practical difficulties than I anticipated. Tell um, us about your shortbread. Well, what I'm trying to make is shortbread that look like little Victoria sponges, because this was the cake I made for my wife and was 
deemed edible. What's the filling then? I'm going to put a bit of jam, right. which I'm going to attempt to make. You're going to make jam? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Okay. If all goes to plan, David will sandwich the jam and vanilla buttercream between his shortbread biscuits. Are you enjoying yeah. this in any way? I, I'm genuinely enjoying confronting my own stupidity. It's a state of your mind at the moment, isn't it? Uh, no, yeah. that's how a kitchen should look, <laughs> I think. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> see you later. Yeah, see you later. What I think I know about shortbread is that any overhandling it turns it into sort of concrete blocks quite quickly. This is unbelievably crumbly. This is like a cheesecake bottom. This is not like the shortbread I'm trying to make. Good morning. Hello. Can you tell us about your shortbread, please? So I've just had to add a bit more butter because it was too crumbly and I you don't want to... added some more butter to your recipe? Yes, a little bit, because I, it wasn't... It was cr all crumbling too much. It wouldn't stick together. This is my first time ever doing this, ever. I've never handled butter before with my bare hands. Jamil has added orange zest to her mixture and she'll make a marshmallow filling. But first, she needs to get to grips with her dough. Do you have any flour underneath this? Yes, I do, I do. I, I did. I, I floured my kitchen surface. It, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty of getting it off the bench. No, you will find that you've got something here. You might just put that oh, by the side. Good. So as you've done your start, I thought that, that was a knife in case you. it just all went too no, no, badly. No, no. You fine. may just need to lift it off. Thank you. You'll be fine. Really hot. You might be there for a while. <laughs> it's okay. It's <laughs> Morning, Sarah. Multitasking here. I could see that. Very nice to see you. What's happened to this pastry? How did you mix it? I've added in the flour and used corn flour. Yeah. I That's like so. corn flour in, in a shortbread because it gives it that little bit of crunch, just makes it so much nicer. Sarah's shortbread biscuits will be filled with vanilla buttercream and she'll use raspberry jam to create a red nose on each one. Can I just feel that? It's just about to go in the fridge, but... Right. I think that's going to be nice and short. I'm going to go hide my shortbread, if that's all right. No, that's nah. no problem at all. Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> Thank you very Good much. Good luck, Sarah. Being in the Bake Off tent is just completely awesome. And Mary Berry actually saying your shortbread dough looks OK. Unbelievable. Michael, your shortbread looks well and truly well. Now, tell us all about it. Well, these are going to be Welsh Dragon shortbreads. Have That's you tried fine. these before? I have done them twice before. My daughter's a big baker, and she, she's brilliant in the kitchen. Um, so she's given me a few lessons. No matter what they've turned out looking like, they've been delicious. And it's because of this. Michael spiced up his shortbread with ginger, cloves and cinnamon but his patriotic biscuits have a sting in their tail. If you look at it, that, that, the actual tail here, it must be very difficult not to burn it. Yes, that is true. It's very difficult to even get it off once I do the, the cutting. Had you thought you might possibly chill that before you cut it out, maybe would that help? Yes, I think I might do that. If you now that you've said it, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't fit, cut it now. Okay. Good luck, Michael. Thank you, thank you very much. So this is the raspberry jam that I don't want the pips in. A pip is always nice in jam, isn't it? Just trying to make the marshmallow icing. We're getting there. I find this, like, this is the most stressed out I've ever been. Yeah, it's bubbling a bit. You keep Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about that. How do you know how to make jam? Um, Did you read it in a book? Exactly. Instructions. Um, but also, <gasps> Joe, I don't, do I? Look, that's not jam. That's strawberries and goo. Well, what I would say is, like, keep boiling it and then it might be like jam. Might be some more like jam. Point in the next week. <laughs> <laughs> Still feels very moist. It's going to be very difficult to cut these shapes out. Sarah's got her shapes cut already. We knew Sarah was going to be a tough, tough competitor. No, OK, we're going to cut. We're going to do it. We haven't got long enough. Comic relief incompetence, you have half an hour left. Ah! Yes, half an hour. It's the ticking clock that does it, the ticking clock. Oh, Lord. 
I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, I, there's not going to be 24, but, you know, we'll get, we'll get what we can get. Oh! Oh, the dragon's wing That's came perfect. off. They're not going to take very long because they're thin, so my great fear is overcooking them. 15 to 20 minutes. In, they're going in. They're going in. The, they're going in the oven. They're going in the oven. Oh, man, it's like a war in here. Next is the icing. So I've got my buttercream that's just made with icing, sugar and butter and a bit of vanilla, and I'm now going to make my icing to go on top. I didn't come into this thinking, oh, the sieving will be a nightmare. You know, I thought difficult things in cooking were like when you flambe stuff. Not when, no, sieving something into a bowl, you'll, you'll wish you were dead. Oh, and now I've seen a single magpie. Oh, it's perfect. We're going for red, traditional colour of the Welsh dragon. Well, that's pink. That's clearly pink. A bit too thick still. Oh, I'm taking a risk here. Oh, I'm taking a risk. Bakers, you have five minutes ah, no, left. No. We are up against the clock now. Yeah, some of these are a little bit more baked this side than they are that side. You could maybe paint that one it's with a bit of... It's uh, an underneath one. Fine, great. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. They didn't look like the worst shortbread I've ever seen. OK. Well, the jam's not too bad, but... I think it's set enough for these biscuits, but if it's too runny, then it'll all go running off. I would say that is not jam. I've got a little bit of squirty raspberry jam in there. Will it keep you going? Oh, that, that would be not allowed. allowed. Oh, so close. Keep, keep going, keep so going, keep going, then. Oh, no. I keep touching fired stuff. <laughs> Bakers, you've got one minute left. One minute. No! That's 60 seconds. Quick! Quick, right. Have I got time to start again? Focus, focus. <gasps> what? I'm being betrayed by my own icing. My boys, John and Fraser, made these flags for me. Fantastic comic relief bakers. It's so thick, I can't get it off my fingers. <laughs> it's a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Bakers, step away from your stations now. Obviously, it, it, it does look, um, it, it does look, um... Disgusting? Yeah. The, the buttercream's hell, though. I mean, even though it's melted. I think those would be delicious for a pudding, but we've asked you for shortbread with an addition. I'm surprised. That biscuit is not too bad at all. It's really crisp. It actually tastes delicious. Oh. Well, um, good. It just looks hideous. Taste is what it's all about, and the taste is good. They look most attractive. They look different. You have got the marshmallow in there. You have got the chocolate. They look very good. It's all down to the flavour. <sighs> Are you choking on the biscuit? <laughs> Dry are they? They're slightly, it's what in technical terms as we call it, overworked the pastry. The texture for me is slightly too dry. I love the orange zest coming through. Well done to attempt the marshmallow, not an easy feat. Mm. 
I can really imagine those selling well at a bake sale. Um, they're very, very tempting. I think they look great, quite neat. Uh, you've had a bit of an issue with, with this one, a little few dark ones. Smashing. Nice, Delicious. isn't it? Absolutely scrumptious. It's crisp. It's a generous filling. I could go for two or three of these. <laughs> I could go for two or three trays of them. Mm. <laughs> very, very, very good. Oh, sure, Brits. Oh, please, thank you very much. <laughs> OK, you've obviously run out of time. I'm a little challenged in the numbers area. They were meant to be 24. Mm -hmm. Nice to see icing skill. It is, isn't it? Didn't quite work out. I... I, I'm, I I can sort of see the dragon. We'll try this one, which is probably the, the better of the lot. Yeah. Lovely blend of spices. The texture is there. The flavour is there. Mm. That biscuit is beautiful. Thank you. It's probably one of the best biscuits here. Beautiful. Everything else is hideous, but the biscuit is beautiful. I would describe that bake as traumatic. But uh, when they said that they tasted really good, the old competitive thing came back. I was like, yes, I can do this. I can do it. I think that my biscuits were passable. I think that they would sell faster than anyone else's in that room. Whether or not people would come back for more, I don't know. The making of shortbread on its own without the jam and the butter, I could probably achieve that at home, and maybe I'll, I'll give it a go again. I think I've come out of a high from that round, but the technical challenge is, is the real test, isn't it? Bakers, it's time for your technical challenge. None of you have any idea what you'll be baking, and today it's uh, one of Paul's recipes. And, of course, you'll be baking lines, so, uh, Paul and Mary, I must bid you farewell at this point. Hope you do well. Paul and Mary would like you to bake mini pork pies. Six of the little blighters. They are made with the notoriously difficult hot water crust pastry. Pies. Yes, Michael. Don't <laughs> mess them up. Now, you have one hour and 50 minutes to complete the challenge. On your marks, get set, bake! <laughs> Rub the butter and sifted flowers. Rub the rub them together. What does that even mean? <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? I don't think I've ever even seen a pork pie. Let's watch Sarah Brown. She knows what she's doing. I do know what rub the butter and sifted flowers together in a bowl mean, which is step number one. Nah, make pork pies. You're joking. That's what factories are for. They look a bit of all right. Why did you choose mini pork pies? A pork pie is one of the best things in the world. And what we've also done is we've popped a quail's egg right in the middle of it as well. Don't you think it's a little bit difficult for that lot? Probably. They're going to have to make a hot water crust pastry. The tricky bit is, if they don't roll it out thin enough, when they put it in the moulds, the whole of the recess will just be hot water crust pastry. It's a different technique, a different pastry. I wish them luck. All they've got to do is bake it properly till it's beautiful and golden brown. And they should end up with six beautiful pork pies. What can go wrong? Right, 100 millilitres of water, it says. OK. One teaspoon of salt. TSP, teaspoon, teaspoon. <laughs> And then add the lard. What even is lard? Oh. I need 60 grams of lard. About that much lard. Add the lard. And stir until melted. OK. Oh, only oh, supposed to be 40 grams of lard. OK, I'm just going to have to gas now. Pop 
pour over, pour over, pour it over the flour mixture. Good job I got that right. It's not really, it's not really coming together as I would hope. It doesn't feel right doing this. Pour over the flour mixture and stir to form a dough. It's probably going to be too much lard now because it had already melted a bit into it. Form a dough from that. Yeah. No, that's far too wet to form a dough. Why would it be like that? Because, because there's too much to... lard? Yeah. Let's roll out the pastry. It doesn't say how thin, so that's really cruel, I think. It's really cruel. You get reasonable pastry on a pork pie, don't you? And I suspect the thickness should be uniform. Still feels very moist. It just doesn't look like anybody else's pastry. I messed up the amount of lard, so nothing is going to work for now. There's no point in pushing through, so I've just got to start again. <sighs> I'm about to make my first ever pork pie casings. This is what worries me. Baking oven until pies are cooked through and golden brown. Yeah, well, that's always a bit of a guessing game. OK, this is going OK so far. If I said it was going well, I'd be lying to you, to be honest. I'm not happy. Nothing about me is happy or joyful. Have you got any idea how long you're going to put it in for? You're putting raw onion in, raw meat. You want all of that cooked through. Yeah. I am, by the way, eavesdropping on that this. That is not. Did you see what the first instruction is? Please do not confer with the other bakers. Ah. Cook the quail's eggs. I'm getting that ready for the, the quail's eggs. What's a quail egg? That no. looks like a chocolate egg. And I was about to put it in my mouth. <laughs> so I'm quite far behind now, but at least it's working a bit better. What I'm trying to avoid is too many little bits of shell adhering to them, because I, I suspect that's exactly the sort of thing that, uh, that Mary and Paul will claim not to particularly like. Delicious quail's egg shell. Uh, for the filling, chop. That's all it says, chop. OK, chop. Chop onion, pork, bacon and parsley. It's like, no, just mix it all together and season. That's the sort of traditional male way to cook, isn't it? To have the one thing and to make a oh, yeah. massive hullabaloo about it. <laughs> I'm doing my <laughs> pork pie today, so <laughs> having everyone standing by with ingredients. Keep my wine topped up. Spoon some of the mixture into each of the pie cases. There's a quail leg in the centre and spoon over more filling. I'm just doing uh, what these instructions are telling me to do. I'm not Nigella, that's all right. The thing to avoid now is the contents leaking out. I thought perhaps this would make me want to cook more. It's actually made me want to cook less. Bakers, you're halfway through. Better get on with it. Right, stick him in. I already feel I know some of the things I didn't do right. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. <gasps> Quite soon, I would need to get my pies in the oven, if not about ten minutes ago. OK, it's going in. Get them in, get them in. <laughs> I know. Oh, they go in the middle, do they? So yeah, I need so to create a bit I'm of space just there. Just put my finger in. Just do it. I have no idea how long they should be in the oven for, but <laughs> I know that everyone else is in. Baking up to the wire. <laughs> Good luck. Thank Goodbye. you. Was that, there was nothing else I had to do, was there? I haven't even read it. Uh, egg wash the tops of the pies. Purely cosmetic. They look really bad. It literally looks like I've made dumplings. I think we're all a bit worried about time. I don't want to relax. I want to nervously hover. I put them in as soon as I could. 
and I don't plan to take them out any earlier than I have to. The good thing is, once you put them in, there is nothing you can do about it. And I quite like that. I'm starting to feel less depressed now. Ladies and gentlemen of the baking variety, you have 15 minutes yeah, left. looking pallid. I think that's the only word for it. If it was a horse, you'd shoot it. Let's have a look. Sarah's are out. Well, I think that's golden brown, sort of telling me it's done. And they smell quite nice. Shall I get mine out? Well, it says here, until cooked through, can't tell, no x-ray vision. I'm going to take them out. I think they might taste OK. They look nice-ish. They're not. They're not. They're not there. They're not there. Are you not taking yours out? This takes a while. No, I'm five minutes behind the rest of you. But yeah, I'm going to wait till there's a minute left. <laughs> look at that! <laughs> Pie! Bakers, one minute left. Ooh, one minute. I don't know, they don't look great. This one was particularly poorly crimped. There's a burnt bit. Ooh. Well, look, they're, all, they're out. They're all in one piece. Bakers, your time is up. Please place your mini pork pies behind the picture of you. Paul and Mary are looking for six perfect pies with golden pastry and a quail's egg right in the middle. We're going to start with this one. This looks quite neat. It's domed as well. The egg's been put in slightly wonky. It's quite thick pastry. It's the lid that looks quite thick. See there? Mm-hmm. Could do with a shade more seasoning. I think the pastry's just a little bit thick, but, it, you know, that will pass as a pork pie in most people's households. Now, this one looks a bit paler. It needs more egg wash on the top to give it more of a, a beautiful golden shine. It's well baked underneath. Here you go, Mary. Bottom's up. There's a lot of pastry around that. Nice flavour. Flavour's good. OK. Move on to the third one. These look quite neat. There's a little bit of leakage. I would say that I think these are slightly underbaked here. I'm not sure until I open it up. The egg's nicely in the middle. Got a decent amount of filling in there. It looks, that looks good, nice doesn't inside. it? And plenty of meat in there. Good flavour. The pastry is slightly underdone. Probably could have done with a little bit longer. Very well, not bad at all. OK. I quite like the look of these guys. Quite neat. I like the glaze on the top. The glaze on the top's nice, yeah. Mm. Eggs fall onto the side. It's a sleeping egg. <laughs> it's fairly equal all the way around. Tastes good. Flavour's good. The pies will be ranked from worst to best. This one has got the most. This one's got the most meat in. So, in fourth place, who is this person? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> the pastry was a little bit thick. The egg is a little bit overcooked. Thank in you. third place is this one. 
Michael, you could have got more filling inside it, but it tasted good. And in second place, really a lovely result. Okay. A uh, well-placed egg, not overcooked. In first place. <laughs> well done, David. Yeah, I uh, can't believe it. <laughs> you've got a nice thin pastry on the outside. The eggs sort of drop to the side slightly, but it's central, and you, you, I like the look of it. It's an attempt at egg wash. It's a nice pull pie. Well done. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. I was very pleased to come first. Uh, so much so that I'm taking some of my pies home. I feel like I did all right. And I didn't get the worst review in the world, just the worst review in the room. Flour has been my friend. Time has been my enemy. But, you know, they keep talking about my flavours. I've just got a lot of flavour. I've always said it. I'll come and give it my best for tomorrow. If I walk out as the star baker, I'll be super thrilled. Well done, everyone. Particularly me. Red Nose Day raises thousands of pounds to help people in the UK and across Africa. And comedian Ed Byrne has been to see why your donations really do matter. I'm in Chiboga in central Uganda. It's a very poor area and most people's income is from basic farming. Chiboga is beautiful but there's very few opportunities to make a living here apart from relying on the land. So for many people, it's a struggle to get by. Margaret knows only too well how hard life can be. She's had to cope with the death of her husband and two daughters. Since then, she's had to care for three children of her own as well as six grandchildren. Her only source of income was the meager earnings she made from selling coffee beans. And how reliable is the crop? But thanks to a savings and loan scheme, which is supported by Comic Relief, Margaret's life has been transformed. These people make regular savings and then they can either borrow that money or share it at the end of the savings cycle and then invest in the projects of their choice. With money that Margaret has borrowed from her savings group, she's been able to buy more coffee beans and expand her business. So this is what Margaret produces, coffee not for drinking but for eating. After the beans are treated, you then crack them open and you get a little caffeine hit. And she sells them in these beautiful little banana leaf bags. <laughs> okay. That was not an uh of approval. That's not a uh. That's an international language of disdain there. It's a lot harder than it looks, although it's not as hard as I'm making it look. Margaret, how has being able to get a loan helped you? You've got to hand it to Margaret. Just that little bit of help was all she needed to overcome some serious adversity and grow this business into something big enough to provide for her children and her grandchildren. But there are many more people living in desperate situations and they need your help. To make a donation, Text the word BAKE to 7005. Text costs £5 plus your standard network charge and £5 will go to Comic Relief. You must be 16 or over and please ask the bill payer's permission. For full terms and conditions and for more information, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Red Nose Day. It's the second day in the tent, and the Comic Relief Bakers are raring to crack on. No! <laughs> How do you think things stand today? In the front running at the moment, I would say it was Sarah and then David. Sarah, her lovely buttery shortbread biscuits, beautifully filled, well finished. And of course, David was first in the technical. His pie, he was there on flavour. 
boss. Michael shortbread biscuit. For me, they were the best tasting biscuit in the challenge. Jamila, everything she does looks right. I mean, those little star biscuits, they looked stunning. Um, but they were overworked. You know, she might surprise us. It is anybody's game, really. Good morning, bakers. Welcome back. Now it's time for your showstopper. Mary and Paul would like you to make a pavlova. It needs to have three layers of meringue and fruit and cream. OK, you have three hours in which to do it. On your marks, get set, break for comic relief. I feel genuinely anxious. I'm so tired. This is the one where you don't want to drop the yolk in. I want nice, clean, white, fluffy meringues, so you actually only make it with the egg white. Oh, shoot. See, egg yolk already. Darn it, right? It's a fine line between a perfect layered pavlova and one that looks a little bit messy. They've got to think of the colours, they've got to think of the fruits they're going to add. I'm looking for a bit of artistic flair on this challenge. How much caster sugar do I need? A bit much. I'm waiting for this to be soft peaks. I, th I think you sort of get to the point where you lift it up and you sort of go, oh, I'm going to be a mountain. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm destroyed. Oh, no, that's not peaks. That's no peaks. I'm just making a basic pavlova meringue and I'm using white wine vinegar and... Um... Uh, corn flour. I put oil instead of vinegar in my um, meringue mixture. I am starting all over again, which is ideal. My bad, my bad. Hi, David. Hello. So tell us all about your pavlova. I'm hoping to make a pavlova sort of in the shape of a, a rocket or spaceship. Um, because my uh, my mum made me a cake in the shape of a spaceship when I was about eight. So I thought that, you know, that was a showstopper for me. David will layer his pavlova with vanilla cream and he'll decorate it with fruit cut in the shape of moons and stars. What's the next stage out of the bowl? I'm going to colour it, right. pour it out onto that in the oven, pray. What colour are you going to do? I'm going to put a bit of um, uh, sort of grey into it and I hope it'll look... Um, Spectacular and somehow alien. But I'm sure, sure it will. will. <laughs> At least alien. <laughs> At least alien. Good luck. See Thank you later. You. See you later. I've sensed waves of disapproval about my choice of the, the metallic as a, something for a food to look like. The gunmetal grey of interstellar travel. What could be more delicious? Hello, Sarah. Hi. Right. Tell us about your uh, pavlova. I was at school in Africa and I thought I would really try and call on memories from my childhood. So we had lemons and limes growing, uh, mangoes were my absolute favourite, and great big coconut palms. So I thought I'd incorporate those. I want nice meringue that's quite crispy around the edges but a little bit of chew in it, which I hope the coconut will give it. For a truly tropical pavlova, Sarah will layer her coconut meringues with lime curd and chopped mango. You're very organised. Oh, uh, I don't feel it. Is there a stage that you think you're not quite sure of? Putting it all together and making it look attractive. It's all the layers, you know. You don't want a bit to go... Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Good Thank luck. You. This is meringue part de. Let's hope it goes a bit better this time. My mum used to, every Sunday, make a lemon meringue pie for the family. So this is sort of in honour of my mother and father, and I hope I don't let them down. Hello, Michael. Hello. So, Michael, what are you filling it with? Uh, it's a lemon pavlova, essentially. Um, I've made this once before, and I'm, making the lemon curd was the most satisfying part for What's me. Was it? Michael will spread his lemon curd on top of passion fruit cream, but he's got to get his skates on. Well, you, you've chosen some classic uh, flavours, however... Yeah. My big concern is timing, cos you've had issues with I timing before. I have had before. issues with timing, yeah. With this one, I feel a little bit more confident. 
if you just put a little bit of meringue underneath that to stop it slipping about, because I'm worried for you. Thank you. A don't give, don't give him any more advice. No. Good, good luck, Michael. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to use this pot of dye to create swirls in my little meringue kisses. Morning, Jamila. Hello. Right. Hi. What are you up to? Um, this is just an idea I had for decoration. But I'm making a three-tiered pavlova. Um, I've put freeze-dried raspberries in the actual meringue mixture. Jamila's planning to perk up her pavlova with layers of raspberry curd and cream, and she's roasting peaches to go on top. I feel confident that I will make it tasty because meringue is very difficult to go wrong with, she says. It's the baking now. It, it, she's just got to watch it. Right, it? OK. <laughs> Good luck, Jamila. You've got some great flavours there. I hope it comes out on time. So do I. I feel like I'm at school again. I'm not going <laughs> to let you down. Thank okay. you. To make a crisp ivory shell, the meringues need a long bake at a low temperature. I don't know what I'm doing. They are going in at 140 degrees centigrade for an hour to an hour and a quarter. Now, that's quite a, a margin of error. I'm just starting to whip the cream. Next, lemon curd. Raspberries for my curd. I'm making the lime curd while it's heating. I know to mix, 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 because I really don't want to make lime-flavoured scrambled eggs. Oh! Oh, no. So I've overcooked the raspberry slightly. It's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at uh, Jamila's place there. Something's gone terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I will not be beaten by him again. I think they've got taller. Are they done? Mine do not look good. I don't even know if it's on. They haven't risen. I wasn't heating them on enough heat. <sighs> oh, here we go. I think they're OK. My technique is to copy Sarah, and then... ..cos I think she knows how to cook things. She turn the oven off and then leave it to cool with the door open. <laughs> I mean, they look like meringues, don't they? Slightly badly made meringues with cracks in them. It's gone massively tall. They have to dismantle the whole kitchen to get it out. How do you know if they're done? I'm waiting for my meringue to cool down now in the oven. I'm not going to relax in this competition until I hear that it's time to stop. <laughs> oh, there's magic in that oven. How's it going? Don't talk to me. No, I'm... Do you need some help? Do you want me to help you? Because <laughs> I'm kind of on top of it here now. Oh, my God, my meringues are undercooked and burnt. How is that even possible? How can they be not cooked and burnt? How has it gone this wrong? Ah! But I, ge I genuinely think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Bakers, you're halfway through your allotted span, not of your lives, of your bake. How on earth do you cut a mango? The passion fruit, I've not tried it before, so this is a mystery to me, really. Good. I think I'm going to just try and make loads of uh, pavlova kisses. They only take an hour to make. I've got an hour left. I'm aware that time is sort of against me, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Oh, no, there's yolk in there. 
So foreign fruit basically see more space age, which is absurd, I realise. How are you doing? Genuinely having to start again from scratch. From scratch? <laughs> this might be the most mess anyone's ever made in the history of the Great British Bake Off. I have a peek at my curd. I think that looks OK. Yeah, it's set, which is the main thing. And it smells full of lime. This could be a little thicker. It's taking a little while. It's taking longer than I would have liked. So I'm hoping that the freezer will thicken it up. Got time. Got time. One. This is going to be my base. Look at that. That's terrible. Nasty. It's going to be covered with cream. There's no way anyone is going to see that. Sorry. Uh, do you think that I could maybe borrow one of your meringues? I've only got three. Do you want to, do you want to swap? It looks lovely. Why don't you mix that up and make it an eaten mess? Yeah, fine, good. Bakers, 15 minutes left to go. 15 minutes. I'd never tried the passion fruit in the cream before. Oh, my God, it works. It works. Well, this happens at the very best hotels. The pastry chef has to pick bits of burnt stuff out of the meringue. Mm -hmm. Just fill that crater with cream. Uh, so these guys, pretty beautiful. Pretty sweet. That has to go on there. I'm a little bit nervous about moving it. This is just not the moment to have something go horribly wrong. All right, we're in. Not as thickened as I would have liked it to have been, but as it's a bit runny, I'm worried about it running down the sides and making it look messy. To drizzle or not to drizzle? It's definitely more moon rock than rocket. Oh, Ooh, that was close. OK. Need to watch out for that. So it's going to be the same idea, but instead of using a big padlova, I'm just going to do it on um, a tiny scale. One minute left. One minute left. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a rocket. <laughs> this is one of the most nerve-wracking things I've ever done. It's the nose cone. Of course. OK. They do say that the best things come in um, small sizes, so... Oh, no. Oh, dear. All right, glue. Dairy glue. Comic Relief Bakers, your time is up. Step away from the bench. Sarah, would you please bring your Pavlo over? over? I'm happy with my bake. I think it's down to the taste and the look when you cut into it, and that's unknown at the moment. You did that little extra of putting the colour around the Pavlo, mm -hmm. which is very effective. Oh. Um, we've got three distinct layers, and I love the huge quantity of fruit that you've got. 
I think attention to detail is superb, but it looks fantastic. You've got the flavours right. However, there's probably, for me, a little too much coconut. This is such a strong flavour and mm -hmm. texture of coconut, you don't actually need that much in there. But every other element in there, the filling, the fruit, the texture, okay. absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. I think my biggest worry is that, that, is that the softness inside the meringue will be an unpleasant softness rather than a nice softness. It's cracked all around the outside. That's what happens to a pavlova. The fruit on there looks good. That will certainly pass as a good-looking pavlova. Thank you very much. Told him well, that, David. That's, wow, that's good. yeah. It wasn't quite the perfect colour to choose grey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, I, I see that. You certainly got the marshmallow centre to it. Could have done with a little bit longer in the oven, but it melts in the mouth. The cream is beautifully whipped. But I think leave out the grey colouring. That's, I think that's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> I just sort of had a bit of a nightmare with my meringue, to be honest. I don't know what happened in there. I don't know what went wrong. I can't explain it. Et voila. I've gone for a, a more minimalist theme, and then I've created this beautiful eaten mess. Obviously, there's been a few issues with this. The, the actual colour of the meringue looks fantastic. Thank you, thank you. And I don't know what else to say, really. I think they're a little bit soft-looking. They've lost their crispness. It's not exactly got the three layers which we asked. They probably could have done with a little bit longer in the oven. Um, the flavour of the meringue's not bad at all. Peach, original, different and delicious. You brought us something. It's not what we asked for, but the peaches are very good. Thanks, Jamila. Sorry. I haven't used a lot of fruit. I haven't used much lemon curd, either. So that, it might be a bit samey. That's my... That's thinking about it now, that's a bit of a worry. I like to call this Beyond the Lemon Thunderdome. I love passion fruit. Passion fruit and lemon go so well together. You've got a beautiful bake on that. Overall, it's been presented very well. All equal. Stan's quite proud. Let's tuck in. But as you cut it, you see the clear lead. That is absolutely stunning. Oh, come on! Yes! <laughs> I'm not competitive in any way. Yes! The passion fruit, the flavour, the zest. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Very, very good. It is sheer perfection. You've absolutely nailed it, 100%. Very rare that happens. This is going into the National Museum of Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a surprise victory, but who will clinch Star Baker? So our group has completed their three bakes. Is that enough to go on to make a decision? I think so. I mean, they were, they were great pavlovas, especially Michael's. I thought that was perfection, actually, which is rare in the bake-off tent. Just a minute, his biscuits, although they tasted very good, we didn't quite have the right number in the finish. But for me, personally, they were the best tasting biscuits. To get the balance of flavours that uh, Michael achieved, you know, with the, with the cloves and the spices, it was fantastic. Sarah's biscuits were memorable to me. They were very, very good. Today in the, in the Pavlova, I think she did well as well. So she's been quite a good, steady baker all the way through this. From what you're saying, the contenders are Sarah and Michael. I think... So what, what, are you, what do you do? We're just going to put our heads together and choose one. Good luck making that decision. You have all produced some amazing bakes. Deep breath, 
Bakers because I am about to reveal who wins Star Baker's apron. This week, it goes to someone who has risen through the ranks to achieve perfection. Michael, <laughs> congratulations! <laughs> oh, my God! There you go, Mike. Very well, nice indeed. That's a fantastic one. <laughs> Pavlova is not only going to become my signature dish, it's going to be all I eat from now on. The next time you see me, I will be like a house. The house that Pavlova built. Thank you. If you'd asked me first thing this morning whether he was going to be star baker, I would have said, not much of a chance. But he made a perfect Pavlova. Well done, sir. Thank you. When you saw the inside of Michael's Pavlova, it was just a joy to behold. Thank you. Wow. All I can really say is I'm very sorry for everything I did, but I'm glad I did it because it was for a good cause. It's fantastic that all the celebrities gave up their time to come in the tent and bake for Comet Relief. They all did really well. There are millions of ways you can raise money, and I would say, why not try baking? If at first you don't succeed, bake, bake again. If you've been inspired to get baking for Comet Relief, you can go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Red Nose Day to find loads of brilliant ideas and details of the special Comet Relief recipe book. Or you could get one of these charming pinnies so that you look like a baking pro, just like me. If you want to make a donation, text the word BAKE to 7005. Text costs £5 plus your standard network charge and £5 will go to Comet Relief. For full terms and conditions, go to the Red Nose Day website. Next time... <laughs> Ed Byrne welcomes four more celebrities into the Bake Off tent. Look away. Nothing to see here. They'll tackle tray bakes. Disaster. Grapple with crumpets. They're not holy enough. I'm never going to get 12 made. And attempt to create show-stopping masterpieces. It just looks a bit burn. It's like my brains are falling out of my head. 